The objective today is to explain what the Intel manual says about the SSE instructions. There's a lot to unpack here. Maybe you'll get that joke in a little bit. But let's dive in with what these represent. These instructions represent an extension of the SIMD execution model introduced with MMX technology. And for more detail, they're going to tell us to go read chapter 10. So in my mind, I kind of just think SSE, the acronym, <laughs> this is just continuing what MMX started. So M is in the beginning of the alphabet, S is coming next, okay that makes sense, it's uh, next up in this whole adding extensions to your instruction set. So I guess that's as good a question as any. What do SSE instructions represent? Now these instructions can only be executed on the Intel 64 and i832 processors that support that. Support for these instructions can be detected with SCPUID uh, instruction. All right, like that exact paragraph is a copy and paste from above when we're reading that. See right here, when we're reading that about the um, MMX technology. So all right, Intel, way to be original there. So okay, maybe not original, but thorough for sure. So these instructions are divided into four subgroups. And the first one's tricky because it has subordinate subgroups of its own. All right, so the first one is SIMD, single precision floating point instructions that operate on the XMM registers, okay? So those are the uh, second wave of registers to come. You know, the first wave is MMX ones. Gosh, that is just so hard to try to keep track of. Well, I know a lot of you out there are like, no, it's not. But for me, I guess I'm just afraid of dyslexia ruining my reading. Well, on to the second subgroup. That's the MXCSR state management instructions. The third one is 64-bit SIMD integer instructions that operate on the MMX registers. And this last one, we have cacheability control, prefetch, and instruction ordering instructions. Try saying that 10 times fast. Instruction ordering instructions. Well, to start with the SIMD single precision floating point instructions, uh, these instructions operate on packed and scalar single precision floating point values located in the XMM registers and or memory, and the subgroup is further divided into the following subordinate um, subgroups. All right, and these groups will look very familiar to you if you've been following along, because every time we come up with this new um, set of ex extensions, we have our data transfer area, we have an arithmetic area, there's always comparison, always logical. Right here is a little unique shuffle and unpack. And then this last one with the conversion stuff. Okay, before with MMX, there was some conversion there as well. I don't want to go too far without a question, so how about this? What makes SSE SIMD instructions tricky? My answer would be they have groups within groups. And how about this for a plan? Let's just read the data transfer instructions. Okay, and then the arithmetic and uh, comparison ones and logical. Oh my gosh, it keeps going so. And we'll save the rest of the SSE instructions for another video just because this first one is actually pretty complex for, you know, data transfer instructions. Intel writes, these instructions move packed scalar single precision floating point operands between the XMM register and between XMM registers in memory. So let's keep it simple. SSE data transfer instructions use which registers? Answer, XMM. You gotta keep up with the acronyms here. Now the first instruction is move apps, as in move for aligned packed, so I circled aligned as in A for aligned, move for aligned packed single precision floating point values between XMM registers or between and XMM register in memory. Oh, I think that might be a typo right there. But it's straightforward that move stands for move, A is aligned, P for packed, and S for single precision floating point. Now if you want to move an unaligned one, and we talked about unaligned uh, data before, well there's that instruction. Next up is moving two, and it's definitely the number two, so moving two packed single precision floating point values two in, and I'm putting, is this another typo? Well, anyways, they're moving these uh, floating points from the high quad word of an XMM register and memory. 
So the only letter in the instruction that changes is H for high quad word. The next one is HLP, which I assume stands for, all right, you're moving these two uh, packed floats from the high quad word of an XMM register to the low quad word of another XMM register. Where Where's the P? Why is that P right there? I just don't know. Maybe precision and then single after that? Yeah, matter of fact, what is the P's? Oh, packed. It's got to be packed. And then, yes, the S for um, single precision. Okay, and now you see why this is going to be our last instructions for this particular video. So the next instruction is just a low quad word. Then we have a low quad word of that XMM register to the high quad word. So L H P S. The last one for this page, but not the section. This is extract sign mask from four packed single precision floating point values. So you're simply extracting whether the number is positive or negative. And I suppose anytime I see the word extract, I think of that little Ghostbusters device. All right, last one, moves, as in move SS. This is where you're going to move a scalar single precision floating point value between XMM registers or between an XMM register and memory. So now we're talking about scalar. So that's a good question. What is a scalar single precision floating point value? Well, thanks for rolling with me here and being patient. In the next video, we'll be able to cover the rest of the SSE instructions. Oh, that is until we get to this MXCSR register where things, mm, they change a little bit.